So we've talked about how to read iambic meter. And in one sense, knowing how to attend to the rhythms of iambic meter in poetry will help you read most formal poems written in English for the last six, seven hundred years. Iambic meter is just ubiquitous as the main rhythmic form that English poetry exists in. But there are many English poems that aren't in iambic meter, and it's important to be able to discern when a different pattern of metrical structure is present. So I want to look at perhaps one of the most famous trochaic poems in the English language. This is the Song of Hiawatha by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. And if you watch this channel much, you know I'm a big fan of Longfellow. And I want you to hear and get a feel for how trochaic rhythms are a little bit different. Now, as we talked about, a troche is an inverted iamb. So an iamb is a pattern of an unstressed syllable and a stressed syllable. And we put those iambic feet together uh, in as many as we want and create a metrical structure of a line. So iambic pentameter would be five iambs. Iambic tetrameter would be four. You can do that with trochees too. A troche is just stressed, unstressed. If you put four of those together, it's trochaic tetrameter. So this is an example of trochaic tetrameter. Should you ask me whence these stories, whence these legends and traditions, with the odors of the forest, with the dew and damp of meadows, with the curling smoke of wigwams, with the rushing of great rivers, with their frequent repetitions and their wild reverberations, as of thunder in the mountains. This is the first stanza of the Song of Hiawatha, and we have Longfellow using the patterning of English words to his advantage. Many two-syllable English words, especially nouns, have a trochaic pattern already. We stress the first syllable, we don't stress the second. Uh, this takes place with verbs too, especially verbs that are one syllable that we add an ing ending to. Running, sitting, swinging, talking. All of these are already trochaic, and so you can just drop them into a line and have an extra troche. So we see this primarily with with the line, with the rushing of great rivers, as of thunder in the mountains. Thunder, mountains, these are already trochaic. And so if we listen, and listen for that first stress syllable, if the first syllable is stressed, it's an indication that a troche is starting off the line. And often when you have trochaic meter, some people have, have compared it to drum beats. Should you ask me whence these stories, whence these legends and traditions with the odors of the forest, with the dew and damp of meadows? Longfellow was criticized by both his contemporaries and later poets for in fact creating too regular of a rhythm to the point where it got monotonous. Now he loved this rhythm. He thought it sounded literally like a drumbeat. And given that the Song of Hiawatha both involves stories of the indigenous peoples of America and also about battle often, this drumbeat really worked well for him.